Putting construction at the heart of economic growth demands strong partnership between industry and government. It's time to really look at how that can make a difference. It's time to focus on partnership. In September 2012, Vince Cable, the Secretary of State for Business, Innovation and Skills, set out his plans for an industrial strategy with sector strategies to be created for a number of key sectors of the economy. And construction was one. The industrial strategy would map out how each industry sector would contribute to growth in the economy. Crucially, construction was identified as an enabling sector. The construction industry is a major contributor to economic growth across all sectors of the economy. Work on the industrial strategy for construction started in January of this year, and I spearheaded the development in my capacity as government chief construction advisor. The result, Construction 2025, was published on 2nd of July this year. From the outset, development of the industrial strategy was a collaborative venture with the industry. To steer its development, I created an advisory council, the Construction Industrial Strategy Advisory Council, CISAC. And CISAC comprised senior industry players drawn from all parts of the industry. In parallel, my civil service colleagues established a cross-government group comprising officials from all the many departments with an interest in construction, including representatives of the devolved administrations. That way, we ensured that the strategy would have buy-in across Whitehall and beyond. The vision in the industrial strategy is that by 2025, construction in this country has been radically transformed. Now, this cannot be achieved by government or industry acting alone. Wholesale transformation of our industry requires partnership. The strategy sets out some joint ambitions for industry and government to achieve by 2025. A 33% reduction in both the initial cost of construction and the whole life cost of assets. And note the emphasis here on whole life costs. A 50% reduction in the overall time from inception to completion for new build and refurbished assets. A 50% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in the built environment in both the construction and operating phases and this is in line with the low carbon route map. And a 50% reduction in the trade gap between total exports and total imports for construction products and materials, with more products and materials sourced in Britain. These are long-term ambitions that are jointly shared by industry and government. Strategic priority areas and drivers of change are identified, and these are grouped under the headings of people, smart, <coughs> sustainable, growth, and leadership. Just as construction is at the heart of the economy, people are at the heart of construction. Achieving the ambitious changes set in Construction 2025 will not happen without a clear focus on people. 
It's the key area for industry and government to tackle together. To transform construction in the UK, we must attract and retain the right people, multi-skilled, diverse, creative, hard-working. It must become an industry of choice. And to achieve this, we need to fundamentally change how the general public perceives the construction industry. We must transform our, our image together to inspire the next generation, both girls and boys, to embark on careers in construction, we need to communicate widely the things that we do, the differences we make to the world, the exciting new technologies we embrace. Another area for partnership is smart construction. Technology is moving fast, even in construction. We're moving quickly towards a digital economy which is starting to have profound implications for our built environment. We must act now to ensure UK construction is and remains at the vanguard of smart construction and digital design. We've made a good start through the BIM programme. These digital approaches to how we design, manufacture, assemble and manage facilities are starting to transform the way in which construction is carried out. However, the opportunities from BIM are much greater. We will only deliver more sustainable buildings faster and more efficiently with far less process waste if we adopt these digital techniques. Adopting these new innovative technologies will provide asset owners with a full understanding of the structural performance of their assets, both during the construction phase and also their design life. And this will result in smarter designs using less material, less carbon, and less labor for construction, while still ensuring full resilience of the assets. The transition to a low carbon economy presents the industry and government with terrific opportunities for growth. Environmental considerations will transform what we build, what materials we build with, and how we build it. And this reaches into every part of the supply chain. And the construction industry has perhaps the most influence over its carbon impact in infrastructure. In this area, less carbon can equate to less capital cost and indeed to lower whole life costs. And there is now a real challenge to also realize this for buildings. And for an industry to be sustainable, it's important for clients to provide as much visibility as possible of the workload ahead. A better understanding of the shape of future work prospects in all the key public and private sector markets provides business with a sound basis to make investment decisions. Growth is of paramount importance to government and the construction industry. And it's time for partnership to achieve growth. The global construction market is increasing rapidly, over 4% per year to the end of the decade with substantial growth in emerging, technology, emerging economies. Transforming the UK construction industry provides significant opportunities for global trade. The UK has got a global reputation for architecture, design, engineering. We lead the world in sustainable construction solutions and digital engineering. And we have a strong reputation for collaborative forms of contract and ethical business practices. Through a more strategic approach to global trade and focusing on the UK's comparative strengths, there is surely considerable scope for the UK to massively increase its share of these rapidly expanding global export markets. But there must also be a strong and resilient 
supply chain. Taking this strategy forward requires clear and strong leadership. This falls to the new Construction Leadership Council, co-chaired by Vince Cable and Sir David Higgins, with broad representation from across the construction industry. The council is where the partnership between industry and government is best demonstrated. To my mind, the significant differences between previous initiatives and the industrial strategy that we have in Construction 2025 are first, it's been developed jointly by industry and government in partnership. And second, the change is to be driven by a joint leadership council. By capturing the hearts, minds, and energies of all parties across our industry, I'm confident that the outcomes will be far more enduring than if governments sought to mandate change from on high. The task of making it happen is not just for government, not just for industry. It requires a joint desire, joint resourcing, and, and joint commitment. Without this sense of collaboration, this sense of partnership, it will fail. It's clear to me it's time for partnership.